I'm going to build a tiny home in my backyard and bring you along for the entire process. After carefully planning and marking out the spot where we would build this tiny home, we picked up some concrete deck blocks and started to level them out. For the foundation of this tiny home, we're using pressure treated 2x6s and setting them into the grooves of the deck blocks until they're perfectly level. Once all the 2x6s were perfectly level, we took a tape measure from corner to corner to make sure that it would be perfectly square. We then screwed and nailed it together and marked where all the rest of the 2x6s would go at 16 and center. We crowned all the 2x6s and used 3.5 inch exterior screws to put them together. After all the 2x6s were in place, I reinforced each one using 3 inch framing nails, then added joist hangers for additional support to make sure this tiny home would last as long as possible. To insulate the subfloor of this tiny home, I picked up some half inch foam insulation that has an R value of 5, which isn't super crazy and since it doesn't get super cold where I live, this amount of insulation should be sufficient for this tiny home. I cut the insulation so it fits in between the 2x6s, then use spray foam to seal it up the best that I can. I drilled small holes into the insulation to allow any excess moisture to escape just in case it gets stuck in between the vapor barrier and the insulation. Then cut off all the excess spray foam before installing the 6mm plastic wrap that will work as my vapor barrier. I laid a bead of adhesive around all the edges before installing my subfloor and for the subfloor I'm using 3 quarter inch tongue and groove OSB and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for not staggering these OSB boards but I really didn't feel there was a need to because this platform's exactly 8 feet wide and all the joints have a direct point of contact underneath which will allow this subfloor to last a really long time in my opinion so I went ahead and secured them into place using 2 inch nails and a bunch of screws. And just like that, we have a solid subfloor that's level and square that we can build our tiny home on top of. The next day, it was time to do some framing, so I picked up a bunch of 2x4s and started assembling the wall frames on top of the platform I made yesterday. For spacing, I'm doing 16 in center and securing them using 3.5 inch screws, then coming back and hammering in 3 inch nails. I used the chalk line to mark where I'll be adding all my blocking, then basically just repeated the same process until all my framing was done. The guy you see helping me out in this video, his name is Tom. He's one of the neighbors that comes by every once in a while to help me out. And when you're doing things like framing, it helps a lot to have an extra hand to do all the heavy lifting. And also shout out to my wife for helping me do all these crazy projects. After two solid days of framing, it was finally time to put up the walls. The front side of this tiny home is going to be 10 feet tall and the back side being 8 feet tall, which will make it feel much bigger on the inside. 
Once we got all of our framing up, we made sure that they were as square and as level as possible. Then we screwed them together to try to make this tiny home as rigid as possible. The next day, it was time to install the rafters, so I got up on a ladder with a 2x6 and started to measure out where I would be cutting out my bird's mouth. And what I'm basically doing is making a template that I can lay on top of all of my rafters to try and make them all the same so I have a nice consistent flat roof. Once we had our measurement, we spent the next hour and a half tracing and cutting out the rest of our rafters. Then we marked 16 in center and screwed them into place using three and a half inch screws. Once all the rafters were in place, we picked up joist hangers and nailed one to each rafter. The next step was to add sheathing to the exterior of this tiny home and we're using half inch OSB and we're using these little clips to space out the OSB just enough so they can expand and contrast. Once we finished covering the entire tiny home and sheathing, it was time to finish up the roof. So we installed the rest of our joists that are overhang on the side of the house. The overhang on this tiny home will be 3 feet in the front, 10 inches on the sides, and a foot and a half in the back. To secure everything in this tiny home, we've been using 3 and a half inch screws, then coming back with nails to make this tiny home as rigid as possible, but also allow it to flex a little bit if it needs to. Now that all the framing for the roof is done, it's time to cover it in plywood. So we got a bunch of sheets onto the roof and then screwed them together making sure all the edges have something to rest on. We also used a bunch of subfloor adhesive to help secure them down as tightly as possible. Once we finished up with the sheathing, we went ahead and added a drip edge around the entire perimeter of the roof and added a few nails every 10 inches or so. We just checked the weather and it's supposed to rain tomorrow night. So we gotta hustle and finish up the roof and all the house wraps so we can waterproof this thing. So 
let's go. Before adding the shingles, I'm installing the sticky waterproof wrap, which seals itself if there's some type of nail hole in it to make sure this roof doesn't leak. Now that the roof wrap is on, it's time to install some shingles. And I've never installed a roof before, but after doing a ton of research on YouTube, it seems pretty easy. I'm doing a stair step pattern and putting 6 nails into each shingle, then repeating the same process over and over again until my roof is complete. Now that all my shingles are put on and my roof is nice and waterproof, I had to router out some windows. This seems really easy to do online, but it's a pain in the ass to do in real life, so I'll probably never do it again and I don't recommend it. Once I finished with that terrible process, it was time to install the house wrap. And this is a pretty straightforward process. You basically just lay it on the house and nail it in. You start from the bottom and overlap the top layer to make sure no water gets in. Now that the house wrap is on, it's time to install some windows. And I cut the house wrap in a way where I can wrap it around the stud just to try to keep it as dry as possible just in case any water gets in. I used window flashing and wrapped it onto the stud before putting the window on. Then laid a bead of window and door adhesive before installing my window. We picked up our windows from Facebook Marketplace to try and save some money, and they were in pretty much brand new condition, so we went with that. Once the window was in place, I made sure that it was square and level and also opened and closed, then went ahead and nailed it into place. I then repeated the same process to the window right next to it. And I'm not a professional window installer, so if you are and have any recommendations on how I can make the next project a little better, definitely drop a comment down below because I love to learn. The next step was to install the front door, so I did the same thing with the house wrap and cut off the toe kick that was at the bottom because we don't need it. In this tiny home we're installing French doors that we also picked up from Facebook Marketplace but they didn't come with a frame so we had to make one. And what I did is pick up a few 1x4s and try and make the most square frame I can possibly make. then brought it into the rough opening and fit it into place. Everything seemed to be going really smooth, but of course when you're doing constructions, things can quickly take a turn. <laughs> 
I made my door frame a half an inch too big. Unfortunately, I made my door frame a little too big and the door wasn't closing correctly, but after a few adjustments, I got it right. I added some window flashing around the door and I gotta say, this thing was legitimately starting to look like a tiny home. The next day, it rained. A lot. So I took that time to go ahead and make the four windows that go at the top. I picked up some glass from Home Depot and cut a dado into the 1x4s then slid the glass into place. I made sure they were square before nailing them into place, then added a bead of silicone around the inside and the outside of the window to make sure it doesn't leak. After letting the windows sit overnight, it was finally time to install them. So I cut my house wrap and these windows fit inside of there nice and snug, super beautiful. I also made sure to aim the windows outward a little bit so water comes off of that little seal that I made. Then I made sure that they were nice and level and I added a bunch of silicone in between the gaps. And added some window flashing around the windows nice and tight and I'm pretty confident these windows won't ever leak especially with the overhang above. And for those who are asking, I did go into the tiny home after and nail them into place to make sure these windows won't ever move. And now that all the windows are installed, it's finally time to install the siding. And for the siding, we're doing board and batten, which is kind of the style right now. And my wife really wanted it, so I really couldn't say no anyways. We basically just put them onto the house, nailed them into place, and used some adhesive to help them stick onto the house a little better. Then did a bunch of measuring so we can cut out the windows, and we triple checked these measurements because these boards are like $50 a sheet and we cannot afford to mess any of them up. Adding these boards to the house was really time consuming because we had to do a lot of measuring but it was really making this house start to look like a home which really motivated me to just want to keep going just so I can see the finished product. Once all the boards were up, it was finally time to add some trim pieces. We measured so the trim pieces can go over the seams to really give this tiny home a nice uniform look. We made sure that the trim pieces were nice and level, then secured them onto the house using finishing nails. And I really wanted to add a wood element to the house, so I decided to add some of this treated tongue and groove pine. 
to one of the corners going from the bottom all the way to the top. So I measured them and did a bunch of miter cuts, then leveled them out and nailed them into place. Once I finished installing all the pine boards, I went ahead and finished trimming out all my windows and I did a nice miter cut around all of them to give it a nice professional look. Once I finished installing the trim, I went around and filled in all the nail holes using paintable caulking. And while I did that, Hope started masking off all the doors and windows so we can paint this tiny home. Since all the board and batten that we installed onto this tiny home is already primed, there was no need to prime it, so we went ahead and started to paint it. We're using a paint gun to paint the exterior of this tiny home and the type of paint that we're using is Bear Dynasty Paint and Primer. This is an exterior paint that we picked up at Home Depot. And the reason we're spraying this on is because it gives you a more professional look and it's much faster to do. After letting the paint dry for about an hour, we went ahead and started taking the masking tape off and what a beauty, we're so proud of ourselves for being able to build something like this. It was getting late in the day, but out of excitement, we went ahead and decided that we wanted to prime the front door because we really couldn't wait to see how this thing would look. So we did just that and absolutely loved it. The next day, it was time to install the soffit. So I drilled some holes so I can run some wire because we're gonna install some puck lights into the soffit. For the soffit, we're installing the same pine boards that we treated earlier to try to keep a nice uniform look. Once we finished installing all of our soffit boards, it was time to drill some holes so we can install our puck lights. I left some extra slack in the wire that I ran earlier and taped it to the roof so when I drill my hole, I don't cut the wire. I connected my wires to the junction box that the lights came with, then clipped them into place and did the same process over and over until all the puck lights were installed. Now that the exterior of this tiny home is complete, it's time to wire it up so we can install our insulation. I picked up a 125 amp breaker panel and installed it onto one of the 2x4s 64 inches high. 
I then installed my receptacle boxes and made sure they were sticking out by about a half an inch so the drywall will lay flush with the receptacles. I then marked two feet on all the studs and drilled three quarter inch holes so I can run all my wires through. I ran the wire from the exterior soffit lights into the receptacle box for my light switches. I then prepped them and rolled them into the box so I can come back later in the video and connect them to my switches. Since we're going to be installing a deck, we decided it would be a good idea to install the outlet on the outside of this tiny home. And since this is going to be outside, we decided to go with a GFI outlet and an exterior box to make sure it's nice and waterproof, then came from the inside and added some spray foam insulation just to make sure no bugs get in. I ran the wire into the electrical box, then hammered on these metal wire protectors just to make sure I don't accidentally screw into the wire while I'm hanging the sheetrock. The next day, it was finally time to install the insulation. We picked up 5 bags of Havelock wool, which is a non-toxic alternative to your traditional insulation. And since this is a loose fill insulation, we started by stapling the netting that it came with, and slowly started filling the wall with insulation starting from the bottom and working our way up. If you notice, I'm installing this without using gloves or a mask, because it's natural and made out of 100% wool, which is the reason I decided to go with this brand instead of some of these other brands that you find at your local hardware store. And the R value of this insulation is 15, which surpasses the local building code, so that's exactly what we want for this tiny home. This was quite time consuming to do, but when you're spending 15 grand on a tiny home for your backyard, we're gonna do it right. My son then finally made it out of bed, so he also came over to give us a hand. We then cut out the excess netting that was in front of all the receptacle boxes, and just like that, the entire tiny home was insulated. Now that the tiny home is insulated, it's time to install the sheetrock. I've only done sheetrock a couple times in my life, so I'm nowhere near an expert, but after watching a bunch of YouTube videos, I felt pretty determined. After doing a bunch of measuring, I used an oscillating tool to cut out the hole for my electrical panel, then basically repeated the same process over and over again until I had all my sheetrock hung. Now that all the drywall is installed, I picked up some sheetrock tape and went along all the seams and edges so I can start to install my joint compound. I spread a generous layer over the tape and all the screw holes while still making it look as flat as possible because if you leave a bunch of high spots, this stuff gets as hard as a rock and it's really hard to sand. 
installing all the joint compound, but I had to wait at least 24 hours before sanding it, so I decided to start working on the ceiling while it dried. For the ceiling, we're using the same tongue and groove pine boards that we used earlier in the video. So we started off by staining them the same color as the soffit and letting them sit overnight, then adding a thick layer of polyurethane to make sure they stay nice and protected. There was 42 boards in total, so it legit took a day and a half just to stain and seal them, which is part of the reason why it takes so long to produce these videos, so if you're watching, I really appreciate it. I then made a bunch of measurements on my roof joists and drilled a bunch of holes so I can run my wires through. My ceiling's gonna have a total of 8 lights, so I left a bunch of slack where each light would go so I can come back later in the video and use it so I can wire up my lights. I also hammered on a bunch of metal wire protectors so I don't accidentally nail into the wire while I'm hanging my ceiling. I then rolled out more insulation netting from earlier in the video, cut it to size then started stapling it onto the ceiling cause this is what's gonna hold all my insulation up. I also added these pieces of foam insulation in between each rafter because my roof is slanted and I don't want the insulation all to fall down to one end over time. I stuffed each cavity with insulation but didn't pack it too tightly to allow the air from the soffit vents to circulate through. Now that the roof is insulated, it's time to install the ceiling. These are the same tongue and groove boards that we stained and sealed earlier in the video and we're securing them onto the roof using 18 gauge finish nails and a shit ton of backbreaking labor. We staggered the board so we don't have a continuous seam down the middle of the ceiling and continued the same process over and over again until all of our boards were hung up. And just like that, we have a finished ceiling that's ready for some lighting. We drilled 6 inch holes, then pulled out the wire that we installed earlier in the video, connected the wires into the junction box that came with the lights, then clipped them into the ceiling and repeated the same process over and over until all 8 lights were up. Once we finished installing the lights, it was time to sand all the sheetrock to get it ready for paint. And I didn't show this in the video, but we sanded and reapplied spackle for 3 days in a row just to try to get these walls as flat as possible, but I didn't post the entire process cause I didn't want to bore you guys to death. Once the walls were ready to go, it was finally time to lay down some paint. For the paint, we're using Showcase Paint and Primer One Coat Guaranteed from Sherwin-Williams and starting off by trimming all the edges then rolling on the rest. 
entire tiny home is painted, it's finally time to install the floor. We ordered a sample box from Florette to help us decide what floor we wanted for this tiny home, then stapled down a roll of underlayment onto the entire floor. We chose their Nikon LVP flooring that has a built-in underlayment, but added an extra 2mm layer even though it's not required. These floor planks were huge, it only took 2.5 pieces to cover the entire length of the tiny home which was pretty cool because it saved a lot of time and it looked really nice as well. I spent the extra money on this brand because these floor planks are much thicker and don't break as easy on all the edges that click together. They're also 100% waterproof and it took us about 45 minutes to install the entire floor. We even did a durability test and they seem to hold up really well. The quality of these floors went above and beyond my expectations. I'm very particular with the type of flooring that I choose because some of the other brands that I've used in the past lift when they get wet and just break when you're installing them. I'm going to put a link in the description for all the products we used throughout this entire build including the floor. Now that the floor is complete, it's finally time to install our receptacle outlets and switches. I made sure all the lights and outlets worked, then went straight to installing the baseboards and trim pieces. Now that all the trim is done, it's time to build a deck. I started by measuring and marking where the deck would go, then making a bunch of holes for the post that will support the deck. I put a bunch of stakes in the ground, then ran a string so I know exactly where to put my holes. I cut down some 4x4s and put them in the hole, made sure they were level and lined up with the string, then poured in a half bag of quickset cement and repeated the same process over and over until all of my posts were in place. I let the post set overnight, then got right back to it the next morning. To frame out this deck, I'm using a bunch of pressure treated 2x6s and basically making a frame around all the posts that I set yesterday. After cutting the excess 4x4s off, I started to hang my floor joists. I put two 3 inch decking screws in each one and spaced them out 16 in center. Once the deck was framed out and level, I added a joist hanger to each joist. This took all day to do, but the next morning we added a bunch of waterproof deck tape on top of all of the joists. 
This will prolong the life of the deck and reduce the amount of squeaking when you walk on it. We picked up a bunch of Trex deck boards and miter cut the first piece. This stuff is $34 a board and we didn't want to ruin it with a bunch of screw holes on the top of it. So we picked up this camel jig that allows us to screw into the board from the side, which basically hides the screw holes in turn leaving a nice consistent sleek finish look. Once the deck was finished, we went ahead and color matched some exterior paint and painted all the exposed edges just to give this deck a nice finished look and man I'll tell you, this made such a difference, it looks so much better. Now that the deck is completed, it's time to install the cable railing. We marked where each post would go, then pre-drilled holes directly into the deck frame. After seeing the Muzada cable railing system, I fell in love with the sleek design they offer, so I reached out and they custom designed my cable railing system so I had the perfect amount of product. I ran the cables through the holes, then crimped the adjustable bolts and basically repeated the same process over and over again until all the cables were in the railings. I didn't tighten the cables until the handrails were installed because the posts are level and squared, so tightening the cables would basically pull them inward, making them crooked. After all the cables were put in, it was time to install the handrail. I used my miter saw to cut the corner at a 45 degree angle, then carefully connected the railing together. What's cool about this handrail is that it has a channel grouped into it so that LEDs can be slid in and a sleek protective cover. We installed the handrail then went ahead and tightened up all the cables. And just like that, we have a deck with a cable railing system. I'll show you the way the LEDs light up later on in the video. I next installed the transitional piece in between the deck and the inside of this tiny home. I also installed some waterproof door and window tape to make sure no water gets down into the subfloor. We decided to turn this space into a home gym, so we picked up a major fitness home gym system and started putting it together. The original idea was to turn this tiny home into a short term rental, but the city wouldn't let us, so we went with the next best option of turning it into a dream home gym. <laughs> 
Since this is such a small space, we decided to pick up the Spirit B-52 because it's a 5-in-1 training system in a single machine. This thing has a power rack, smith machine, cable pulley system, and a bunch of other cool features which will allow us to work out in our backyard. It took about 3 hours to put the whole thing together and what's nice is that now I can cancel my gym membership. This was much easier to install than I expected and I couldn't be happier with this home gym system. This entire project cost us about $15,000 and took a little over a month and a half to complete from start to finish. <laughs> 